Hey guys, it's Mike McPuff here. Today I'm going to show you how to make a uh, animated video like the one you see in front of you with uh, all free programs and you can do it from your house. So the first thing I did was take a video of myself drinking from a bottle to kind of get the motion down so I can just trace over it pretty much. It's called rotoscoping. I just use a uh, pretty cheap video editing software um, called VideoPad. You can really use whatever, you just want to get that uh, little clip of whatever you want to trace over. Um, you don't want it too long because there's a, usually 10 frames in a second of video. So 10 different drawings you have to do per second. So you don't want it to be too long, but once you get that, uh, you know, clip that file out of your video and save it we are going to then take it into another program which will convert it into frames so right now you can see I'm just saving it making a special folder for the kombucha file and then we are going to take that into another program. So this program right here is called Free Video to JPG Converter. We're going to upload the file that we just made of the reference video. And uh, I usually, since the video was about three seconds, I'm going to choose to make 30 frames out of that. There's a few different ways you can do down at the bottom you can see those three little um, dialogues right here but um, I'm gonna do 30 for this one and go ahead and convert that into the folder that we made so first we're gonna open up the program GIMP and go to open as layers then find the folder where you saved all the pictures for the reference, you'll see they're all listed right there. Click the top and then the bottom while holding shift. And it's going to select all of them. Then you're going to hit open. And that is going to open all of them as different layers inside one project, pretty much. That's why we hit open as layers instead of just open. Now, if you go to layers, um, you should hit control L. Or if you go under windows, uh, dockable dialogues, layers it'll, they'll pull up um, you can see if they came in the right order um, now you want to go to layer stack and then reverse layer order if they came in backwards at all um, and then we're gonna change the size of it to be around 500 by um, just something less than a thousand and then go to uh, filters, animation, playback. And that's how I opened up that last window. Um, and then once you do that, you can kind of make sure that it all works like you saw that it, um, it flowed smoothly. So after I do that, I'm gonna create transparent layers to add on top of each different frame. Pretty much imagine it like transparent paper that you're going on top of um, a bunch of different printouts with or something like that so um, usually you can just drag and drop these layers but while I have the screen recording thing open it won't let me do that so that's why it looks a little bit funny right now but you can usually just what I'm trying to show is you're gonna have a transparent layer on top of every other layer so that you can see what is behind it while you're drawing it and go on to the next one so once you have all your images set up, you're going to make sure that it's working properly. Now 
And whenever I do something on a project, I make sure to save it a few times to uh, have a backup and a regular one in case I accidentally save something that was messed up, like especially before I check the animation and change its size um, because there's no way to really make it go larger again without losing some of the resolution and stuff like that. So once you have all your layers set up and you are have your um, transparent layer on top, you can either do them one at a time or set them up like I just showed you. Um, you're going to choose a paintbrush, paintbrush tool. You know, I usually, for this method, do all black in the just regular circle style. Um, find a size that looks good for the image that you have. Um, I try to have my images pretty decent size, like 3000 by 1600 pixels or something like that. but. It doesn't really matter, just the lower you go the better, and if you keep it a uh, square size then it will be best for Instagram, so keep that in mind as well. So right now you can see I'm just kind of going over my body, tracing over it. I do use a drawing tablet to do this, but I will show you how you can do the same thing without a tablet and still be pretty fast too. Later in the video I had to go back over and delete or uh, erase some of these lines that were around my shirt because uh, they were just like kind of wobbling too much and stuff. So uh, that's one thing I didn't keep in mind was to get my shirt a little bit closer to my body so that in the final animation it didn't look weird because the concept for this is kind of the outline of a body drinking this kombucha tea and inside of their body is a uh, landscape pretty much and it is nourishing them so we just kind of want like an outline of a body and a face. We don't really want too much detail on it. The next step is going to be to merge down each layer. So you're going to right click each layer, um, each transparent layer after it's on top of the white. You're going to right click it and hit merge layer, merge down. Once that's done, you're just going to go and click on all the original reference photos. Uh, click on the layer and then click the little trash can towards the bottom of the layer screen to delete it. That's going to remove those so that when we play the animation back, they won't show up in there as well. Okay, so after that's all done, you're going to want to make sure you save it before you do this, but go into image, then scale image, and then I did mine at a thousand. You might want to do yours at like 500 for the top number. Um, then you're going to go to the filters, animation, then playback to uh, watch it and make sure it's looking how you want it to look so far. So for mine, you can tell there are some things that are a little too wonky right now or lines I might have missed so I'm gonna go back and fix those so before you do anything else make sure you go back and hit undo to get it back to the original size um, right here I'm just kinda of showing how I'm going in and adding more stuff onto the original layers now that I have the basic outline done and um, doing it pretty much you know the frame by frame cartoon way of uh, just seeing what's underneath each layer and drawing right on top of it
So the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is to put a threshold filter on each one. So you go to colors, threshold, after you select layer, then hit okay. You can adjust that too if you want, but uh, with the lines we're using, you shouldn't have to adjust it too much. You're gonna do that on each layer. And so what that does is makes everything pure black and white. Like I'll show you, this is without threshold, what this line is. You can see the difference between the two lines. The left one hasn't been thresholded yet. That's what it looks like after the threshold. And if we don't do that, and if we go in and add color with the paint bucket tool, you'll see that it leaves a ring around the shape. But if we threshold it first, it allows us to add color on there without any ring around it or anything like that. Once that's done, you can go in and check your animation again under the animation filter just to make sure that it's looking good so far. So at this point, I'm pretty much just using the uh, paint bucket tool in the very right, um, selecting the color I want, then just putting it in that area for each different layer. And that is how I get the color in there. And if you want your color to change at all, you pretty much just have it slightly adjust as you go. Um, I'll try to show that a little bit later in the video. If there's anything you forgot, you can just draw it back on there with the black uh, paint tool and then just select that area that you drew on top of and hit the threshold uh, filter again just so that it doesn't leave any rings around it. So this is how you transition your colors from one to another. For instance, I'm trying to make this uh, dirt a little bit darker, like fade from kind of a lighter yellow brown into a darker orangey brown so I, I'm just going to keep selecting colors that um, are a little bit more towards the final color on each frame just barely um, adjusting it it's kind of a uh, thing you learn to do it's it's really not that hard you just kind of see where the other color is on the spectrum and then we're going to use the select by color tool the little finger pointing at the colors and what I did here was I selected all the blue and then I filled in the blue with a raindrop kind of effect to go in there and had a change in every layer. Once your animation is done you're going to go export it as a GIF file. So just go .gif after whatever you type. Then uncheck that box that says GIF comments. Check the box that says as animation. And then go under that um, dialog box and click one frame per second. Click that option and then save it. And there you have it. That is the file that was saved from what I just showed you. I'm going to make another part to this where I uh, add more to this video and show you how to kind of connect different smaller clips together. Thanks for listening. That was my first tutorial that I've ever done right here. So let me know what you thought of it. If there's anything I can improve on, what you liked, and uh, subscribe if you like my channel. Thanks.